Hello and welcome to this lecture in the I Think Biology and PTEL course. This is week two and we are discussing the process of science. This is part two of the lecture called Numbers and Scales in Biology. In the first part of this lecture, I discussed uh, these four topics, which are uh, the different types of scales, then uh, spatial and temporal scales in biology, and how to read a graph with different scales. In this part of the lecture, I will now deal with two topics. One is uh, we will learn to, how to do simple exercises in estimation, and I will also talk about allometry. So to start with, let's look at a simple question, uh, which I think many instructors ask their students in a biology class. What is the number of cells in a human body? And this exercise should be treated as a way to figure out how to look at a problem and how to go about solving it, because there could be a number of different ways to solve a problem like this. So if we are asked this question, we could say perhaps, okay, so the number of cells in could be, uh, say, the mass of an average human body. divided by the mass of a cell. So the numerator might be easy to get a value for, right? So we could say, okay, the mass of an average human body, I can say, okay, for an Indian, it could be approximately 70 kilos. But how do I find out what is the mass of the average human cell? There's no good way for me to know what that could be. Another way uh, I could try and do the problem is if I look at volume uh, relationships. So again, a similar equation would apply. So if I have number of cells would be the volume of the body divided by the volume of an average cell. So here I might be on firmer ground because I do know of certain lengths of cell, I mean, I do know certain cell sizes. So I know that cells typically occur within um, 10 to 100 microns in length. So I could try and figure out the volume of a cell. But what do I find, uh, do to find out the volume of a body? So again, here I could be helped uh, by a third relationship, so which is that of density, right? So I know density is uh, mass by volume. And so uh, the volume would be mass by density, right? So what do I take the density of the human body to be? So thinking of the fact that we are primarily comprised of water, let me say that I'm going to assume that the density of the human body is that of water. So then density D becomes 1000 kilograms per meter cube. And here I'm working in SI units so the volume becomes 70 by 1,000, which means 70 into 10 to the minus 3 meter cube. So there I have the volume of a human body. Now I have to figure out what is the volume of, a, of an average cell. So again, I could make a very crude assumption that uh, my cell is a cube in its shape, right? So it's 10 microns by 10 microns by 10 microns. So then the volume of the cell becomes Uh, 
that was 10 to the 3 micrometer cube. Right? Okay, so now I also have the denominator. The only thing I need to now make sure of is that uh, the units for both the numerator and the denominator are the same. So I need to convert my micron cubes to meter cubes. So I know that one micron is uh, 10 to the minus 6 or 1 millionth of a meter. So 1 micrometer cube would be 1 meter cube, which is 10 to the minus 18 meter cube. So I now have both uh, my numerator and denominator in the same units. So I just have to do the division now. So let me try and do that. So my n is 70 times 10 to the minus 3. Oops. Divided by 10 to the minus 18. So if I just, uh, oh sorry, it's, I've forgotten this uh, thousand here. So actually the, uh, the volume of the cell Is 10 to the minus 3 into 10 to the minus 18 meter cubed. So that's 10 to the minus 15 meter cubed. So I just have to add there. So then if I take into account all the exponents, I have Seventy into ten to the twelve as the number of cells in the average human body. So that's seventy trillion. And uh, results. I mean, studies tell us that the number of cells in the human body is about thirty-seven trillion. So our, our number is not too far off from. What is what the actual number is. So as you can see by doing just a very simple calculation I was able to get at this number but I do have to caution you and say that a lot depends on your on your initial guesses. So for instance the fact that I've assumed that the density of the human body is that of water that's one assumption I've made and then again, the assumption that uh, a cell is a cube, 10 by 10 by 10 micron cube, that's a very crude assumption, but in this case, it seems to work. And then I'm arriving at a number that is reasonable. So uh, the main thing here to note is uh, what is the exponent which I'm uh, reaching in my calculation. So if it was like 70 into 10 to the 9, which would be 70 billion cells, that would be two less. Or if it's 70 to 10 to the 15, that would be too many cells. So I need to figure out if it sounds reasonable and uh, there are certain ways to also cross check it. But the basic idea here is that uh, based on our knowledge of length scales, we can try and do a calculation like this. There's another example uh, given in the primer in the I Think Biology textbook, which is about estimating the length of chromosomes. And that's uh, dependent on your knowledge of the distance between base pairs within a DNA double helix and the genome size of a particular chromosome. So I encourage you to uh, look it up there in that primer. Let me now move on to another use of numbers and scaling in biology, and that's the whole field of allometry. Allometry is basically looking at relative growth 
uh, within an organism. So comparing different processes as a function of growth within a particular organism or comparing across uh, organisms. So shown here is a plot, a log log plot of a human body and various organs uh, in the human body as they grow as a function of the body size. So on the x axis, you have the body size and we are using mass here as a, as a proxy for the size. Uh, so as the mass increases, the size will increase uh, naturally. And uh, on the y axis, again, you have the organ size. Uh, again, that is a log scale. So the line uh, which has been drawn is to show that if uh, everything were equal, then whichever organ that we are considering is growing at the same rate as the body, which means the slope is one. So this, the slope of this line is equal to one. So if we look at the blue dots, they uh, stand for the human heart. And we see that the human heart keeps growing as a function of the body. And actually, if you try and fit a line to this, then the exponent, I mean, the slope comes to very close to one, which means the human heart is growing at the same rate as the body. And in fact, we can define a relationship like this. So log y equals alpha log x plus log b, which is basically the equation of a straight line. So here, y is organ size x is body size log b is the intercept and alpha is the slope and it's also called the allometric coefficient So if the allometric coefficient alpha is close to one, that means uh, things are scaling at the same rate, whichever are the two things that you are comparing. So in this case, we are comparing body size with particular organ size. So for the heart, that allometric coefficient is close to one, uh, which means that the heart is growing at the same rate as the body. But now if you look at the brain, uh, the pattern for brain growth is very different. And uh, you can see that the brain growth seems to flatten out and in fact the brain uh, achieves its final size at about age six uh, so which means the brain grows at a much slower rate as compared to the rest of the body as we develop so looking at these two relationships uh, tells us something about physiology and the decisions uh, which are made in the functions of certain organisms and that explains the reasons why they are the size they are and the rates at which they grow. So allometry allows us to actually compare and look at relationships across scale, whether it's a function of time or space, uh, depending on the relationship uh, that you are interested in. So here's another relationship which is uh, shown in allometry, and this is also called Kleibler's law. So here we are comparing uh, body mass of different uh, animals uh, to their metabolic rate or basically their energy, you could say is their energy requirement. And uh, amazingly, we find that across six orders of magnitude, so we're going from like 0 0.01 in kilograms to over 10,000 uh, kilograms, six orders of magnitude, the same relationship seems to hold for body mass uh, and its relationship to the metabolic rate or the energy uh, requirement of an organism. So which seems to suggest that there could be universal rules governing mass and uh, metabolism. And we are yet to kind of discover the reason for this relationship, but uh, there has been much work done in this area. And this is uh, still very much relevant uh, especially now given uh, climate change and people are finding out there are serious consequences of climate change uh, to 
the body mass and size of organisms, both plants and animals. So here I am highlighting a report which looked at the sizes and shapes of birds. And uh, they found in the North, uh, North Americas that uh, birds were becoming smaller and developing longer wings in response to uh, climate change. So again, looking at these kinds of allometric relationships allows us to discover what is happening uh, and the changes which are happening due to environmental changes. Uh, so with that, I'm closing uh, this lecture on numbers and scales, and we can discuss some of these topics in the tutorial. Thank you.